Harlem has always been at the epicenter of black political organizing in every ideological form that it could take. People like Adam Clayton Powell Sr., the senior pastor of Abyssinian Baptist Church. From the pulpit came the foot soldiers of so much of those political movements, from socialism to black entrepreneurship, a form of black capitalism, as well as to the traditional civil rights ethos. And then, of course, his son, Adam Clayton Powell Jr., who went on to be elected to Congress in 1944, the first African American elected to Congress from New York. But you also had people like Ella Baker. Ella Baker was an early organizer here in the 1930s, but eventually rose to national significance as the field secretary for the NAACP. Well, it was Ella Baker who worked closely with Stokely Carmichael. They wanted to take a more direct action approach and eventually led to the founding of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Harlem was home to the post-civil rights leaders, people like Percy Sutton, who were civil rights lawyers who defended African Americans against police brutality, subterfuge by white business owners, by property owners, etc. Also invested in the cultural roots of this community and making sure that there was black ownership of the production of, of culture here. You also had nationalists like Marcus Garvey to eventually members of the Nation of Islam that began to set up shop here uh, in the 1940s and 50s, the second most important outpost of the Nation of Islam that was headquartered and opened by Malcolm X, Temple No. 7, was here in Harlem. Harlem gave birth to that range of expressions of activism, and that's what's so rich about this community.